And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and also on YouTube if you're watching this video later on over there for our first deck of the day, which is going to be Mono Red Krasis. So this is basically a Mono Red mid-range deck that is splashing for the very easily splashable Hydroid Krasis. That's kind of just, you know, what we have going on here. This is a donation deck, as you can tell up here. That's what this D, D stands for. So this was um, a deck that was donated by a viewer to see. And the deck is is built for best of one, is what they say. They, they said they play lots of best of one with this deck. But so they didn't have a sideboard. So I put together a sideboard and I, I made one small change. So they had three Bane Fires in the main deck because in best of one, Esper Control is such an important part of the metagame. It's it's basically a whole lot of mono red and a lot of uh, mono red aggro and Esper Control. You see those two are the most important decks in best of ones. You see those two a bunch. So having all those Bane Fires is necessary because you don't get a sideboard. So here we do have a sideboard. So we can have cards like Cindervine, Warboss, Karn, you know, cards like this that we can bring in against uh, Esper Control. And I even have an expansion explosion uh, that can copy cards like Absorb and uh, Chemistry's Insight and stuff like that, or Late Game just also have the explosion part as well. So I took two of the, the three Banefires and moved them to the sideboard and replaced them with two Lava Coils. And then I have the other Lava Coils in the sideboard over there. Wanted a little bit more removal for like Wild Growth Walker in particular. So we'll kind of see how that works out. Um, but this deck looks pretty interesting. And yeah, that's what, that's what we have here. Mono Red Krasis. Played a little bit of ranked earlier. Played three matches earlier today. Won them all and I'm now gold. Uh, whatever the first gold thing is for, or whatever. Because I will be starting, once I get a, a thumbnail for it, I'm going to be starting a YouTube series where I play some ranked for just for YouTube. Um, and at least get to, at the very least, get to like where we need to go for the, that Vrasis Contempt, um, whatever level we got to get to for that. But we'll see if we can even get to Mythic by the end of the month. <laughs> Does red need Krasis? Well, it depends on what red deck you're talking about. Mono red aggro, no. But uh, a mono red mid range deck like this, yeah, it could use Krasis. The lightning, I mean, the lightning strike full art, I. Just got it like all the rest, you know, just spent the, I guess so it's an uncommon, so 600 gems for it. Okay, what's up, Papa Tim? 19 at 60 pal. Everybody else that was just joining in here. Okay. So let's just go ahead and shock this. I'm going to shock it now to so my opponent doesn't have... Doesn't have uh, Wizard's Lightning turned on cheaply. Hey, that's convenient. That's pretty convenient, Hawkeye. That Steam King can run away to the graveyard. Oh, it said it wasn't available? Oh, well. Huh. I don't know. I just, I got it today. Actually, so I don't know. Maybe it wasn't available previously. Meow, 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 meow. 
All right, we'll keep that. Kill that thing. All right, so we'll see how crazy our opponent can go with Frenzy. But just like before, I like killing Lava Runners because if there's Wizard's Lightnings on top, I don't want... I didn't want my opponent to get the one mana Wizard's Lightnings. And I also kind of figure that we don't really need to save the burn spell because our opponent will probably give us a, a burn spell for Daredevil. So we could have Krasis for five. Oh, I didn't start Deckmaster. Sorry, sometimes I forget to open up Deckmaster at the beginning of the stream because it's an application that's just in the background that I don't ever see at all. So yeah, you just have to let me know at the beginning of the stream if I forget Deckmaster. And, and yep, now it should be up. Move this stuff out of your way so you can lay down right there. There you go. Gotta move my movement watch. Oh, did I just do that during upkeep? Yeah, it's my turn. Oh, okay. No, no, good. Good. This treasure cove's untapped and everything. Okay, good. All right. Uh, four, five, six, seven. All right, okay. Hey, move. Move. I need to get to the mouse. Hey, come on. I need to get to the mouse. Get, get over here. Thank you. My opponent's probably not too happy with, with me. Ugh. Banefire looked great. Didn't get to do anything with Krasis, but Krasis is still good. So let's get these lava coils in there. Come on, Hawkeye. Chasing my hand around, thinking like Hawkeye's thinking that I'm playing with him as I'm trying to just like reach for the mouse and stuff. Uh, let's get those in. No, we're not playing. Ugh. Stay here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Bringing in Lava Coil. Banefire doesn't seem to be too good. Even though it's, you know, finished out that game, but, you know, just casting a big crisis would have also. I kind of like Expansion. You know, copying their... Uh, lightning strike or whatever. Um, I don't think I'm like Cindervine Zing or anything like that. Karn is not spectacular in the matchup, but it's good after I stabilize. 
But I'm going to go ahead and ditch the Karns, and then I think I'm going to play a Cannonade that can take out a lot of creatures. All right, let's try this. Alright, very, very reasonable hand. Plenty of removal. Yeah, Vine's Killing Frenzy is, is certainly the best thing it does. The little bit of chip damage that it can do, I'm not really that interested in. I'm not, I'm not really interested in playing like a, a two mana spell that deals three to them. And like, you know, that it kind of thing. But the fact that it kills Frenzy, that's... That's valuable, but that's the only thing that I really value from that card. And therefore, I, I don't think it's quite worth it. No, don't make the Steamkin a 2-2. That'd be nice for Chain Whirler to mop up the Steamkin again like the first game, but not going to happen this game. I do not want to shock with any of these lands, even though, like, Daredevil, Daredevil there, shock, shock the Steamkin would have been nice, but we're going to wait. Be patient. Correct, but I'm, I'm not playing Lightning Strike to go upstairs, is what I'm saying. That's a good spell for my opponent, the two mana spell that deals three damage or, like, whatever, like, Cinder Vines would do, but that's not what... Like, I'm the bigger control deck in this matchup. Like, just imagine if we had Cinder Vines in our hand right now, and also imagine an opponent doesn't have Frenzy. Like, when was I going to play Cinder Vines? Like, like if I... Like, I was certainly killing these Steamkins. So it's like, you know, we got to gotta play early defense. We don't really want to take a turn off just to play a Cinder Vines. So it's like, later on, after our opponent doesn't have the creatures anymore, then we play a Cinder Vines, and is it really doing that much? The other thing is you could just have Cinder Vines in your hand and you don't have removal for the creatures and the creatures are just killing you because you just have Cinder Vines. And uh, that is not really a unrealistic scenario at all. I'm right, just going to take this Risk Factor here, exile that thing. Get that out of there. Blech. I'll use coil over strike to be able to have the strike up for an an attacker at instant speed. I'm not gonna use the other coil though, because I could see my opponent having phoenixes. So, like, I'd make sure to use, like, the next time to use Shock, or Lightning Strike the next time. Ooh. Jaya. Time to face me. Jaya's cool. in here or is it just me no pretty hot in here what was that for nice work out there <laughs> that's your first time to see Jai on the board ever I played it Play a decent amount of Jaya. I haven't, not recently, but Jaya is awesome. Um, I guess I just skewer.
Because I want to get the extra pressure down. We have enough removal. Hey, it's that disposal hero. Yep, we're starting with mono red crisis. Alright, we're gonna just go ahead and play the cycle crisis. Yeah, that, so far we've only played two games, but mana hasn't been a, an issue at all for us so far, these two games. Yeah, our, all of our lands except for, yeah, we're even playing an Arch of Araska. Um, that's worked out so far. Alright, want to know. The mono red aggro, we got to just go a little bigger and everything. Alright, this looks like a reasonable hand for sure. Definitely looking for the Karn to be able to continue to hit land drops, uh, to be able to make a bigger crisis. Steam vents. Steam vents is usually a good matchup for Daredevil. Decks that play Steam vents are usually good for Daredevil. I'm gonna play like a. Is this like Drake's play like a Discovery? Hey, it's a card that I was thinking. So I'm. Fortunately, two mana away from playing that, but Daredevil with Dis Discovery attached is pretty nice. Ugh, get that Phoenix out of here. Never mind, I don't, I don't like Phoenix as much. Fortunately, like, everything costs four. <laughs> it would have been a little more convenient if my opponent played Opt, where I could Daredevil Opt, I suppose. But their deck's probably going to have a lot of Lava Coils. So I kind of want them, so maybe I should wait on the Daredevil and wait for them to Lava Coil something so that I, that I that then I can Lava Coil a Phoenix and get that exiled. So I think next turn I'm playing Karn. They kept both cards this time. It would be nice if we draw a spell, ever. Not just lands. I have faced worse than the likes of you. Are you certain of your decision? These sleeves don't do anything real shiny. Oh, our opponent's playing slow. Come on, opponent. You can do it. There you go. Alright, so no no steam vents for us. Guess they don't care too much about a chain whirler. And 
And obviously looking at our hand, we are happy with taking the Chain Whirler over the land. We don't really need land number eight right about now. Glad that it's not another Phoenix. Please stop. So do I want Please to do Daredevil shock a Phoenix? I am proud. See if they just play a lava coil here. Because I would certainly prefer to coil that. Out of here, other Phoenix. Yep, there's the coil. And I like waiting one more turn for Krasis because I, I like playing these Krasis as, you know, play one at 5-5 five, five next turn so it doesn't die to a coil. And then play you can play the other one as a 6-6 six, six next turn, the turn after that. Deck's going well. This is our third game so far. We won our first two games against Mono Red, so we got that match. And then this is game number three for us to play it, so... So far, so good. We're not really looking at too great here, but we'll see if Krasis can pull us out of this one. Oh, attack with Electromancer. Do it. Dang it. Okay, now certainly not looking good. We'll get our other Lava Coils in from the sideboard for this matchup. I'll be taking out the Chain Whirlers, I suppose. Expansion, we can copy their coil for their thing. Just replace Chain Whirler with War Boss. War Boss does die to shock, but it actually is a clock. Chain Whirler is not. May I just do I want the Bane Fires? You know, Bane Fires five mana removal for a Drake. But still removal for a Drake. And what do I think about Karn? No, Cinder Vine's not good. Cinder Vines doesn't prevent us from dying to Crackling Drakes and Arclight Phoenixes. So it is not going to be in here. I don't really love for Shock for Lightning Strike. Box better than strike. Go 
it costs less and kills the other things. Would I rather have War Boss or Karn? Well, I like treasure map and I like clava coil. I mean, we need a we have a scry and a draw step to get our second land, and then treasure maps help us get more lands. I think this is probably better than five. We'll go ahead and keep this and hope one of our top two cards is a land. It's a bad sign. Come on, deck. Give me some lands. Can we still get there? Yeah, definitely love a third land here. Be able to play map and scry. Am I paying two life to scry with map? Definitely seems like our opponent's hand is probably just a bunch of crackling drakes and arc light phoenixes, which is a real big problem, of course. One's not, not a problem. Halt Wool for the third month. What would you risk to? Thank you so much for the resub. Thanks for the continued support. Saying so many different decks on your stream. Bye -bye. I love it. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, that's what I am here for. That's what I like to do. Play lots of different decks. And. Try to help give ideas and everything. And, and y'all help too. I mean, you know, get a lot of really cool donation decks and everything. Like, this is a, a donation deck. This is not one that I put together. And this is a really neat deck. And, and I am thankful for that as well. Just want to peek. The weight is killing me. Yeah, Karn will do a good job help you know, do a good job for us finding lands, but how am I dealing with this Ral? I have no idea. I mean next turn I can flip the treasure map and maybe cast a large enough bane fire to kill Ral? Like probably not.
well chosen. Cool. Got all the lands now. See, the only card for Daredevil to hit is Opt over there. I'll have eight mana for next turn, so I could Bane Fire for seven next turn. Won't kill Ral. But it'll get us close at least. But I think the, the damage is likely done. Expecting some some phoenixes here. Yeah, if they're willing just to throw out a radical idea. Yeah, so we're going to have at least one phoenix. If not more. Yeah, this game's going to be a loss. I think our deck would be pretty good against Drakes, but phoenix is a mm, lot decisions, bigger decisions. problem for us. The whole coming back and everything. But Rao, in particular, how we we're already behind. Can't deal with it. I don't think War Boss would have been better than Karn. Just not, not necessary. So they they're keeping two mana up again, just like they did last turn. With the Electromancer out, you know it's basically like four mana. Yeah, we have a Lava Coil now with the Daredevil, but how do we... If we Lava Coil, we're not stopping the the Is It Viceroy. So I have... I have seven mana right now. So... <clears throat> Bane Fire for six isn't enough. We could Bane... So if I go... Yeah, so I, I guess I just have to cast Banefire for five on Ral, so it's uncounterable. And then Lava Coil Crackling Drake. But I mean, this this Ral getting card advantage here, um, and we're we're just really dead. So if we if we go Daredevil plus Coil on the Phoenix, then I have two mana left, and I can Bane Fire the Ralph for one. And yeah, we keep Ralph from ultimating for a turn, but at what end? Like to what end? This this Ral just destroyed us. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> You're good. Not as good as me, but... Maybe we should have some spy glass in the sideboard. Spy glass for a row would have been really nice. If our opponent would have just attacked us, we'd be taking lethal here. But I don't think it really matters. I don't think there's anything we can draw. I didn't didn't put in the Star of Extinction in the sideboard. That thought about playing one Star of Extinction in the sideboard. It certainly seems like that could have been worth it if we had a Star of Extinction here. Probably would have got countered if our opponent was keeping up the mana, though. I think they have Disdainful Stroke. Thing. Coil this thing. Pawn still has seven cards in hand and a row. Still really dead. They had no cards to get rid of for that radical idea there. All their cards in hand, they were like, no, I'll just keep these. Hmm. I don't need to actually time. cast this radical idea over here. Uh, what other threats are in the deck besides just Phoenix and Crackling Drake? Uh, there's probably Niv Mizzet in the in the deck here after sideboard, but I think it's just Goblin Electromancer, Ral, Crackling Drake, Phoenix, and maybe Niv Mizzet. But there's yeah, there's certainly more Crackling Drakes and Phoenixes. We've only dealt with two of each. There's the other two. Gone through 16 more cards than us. Oh, the, the game's been over for a long time. So I put the one up on the board. There under the lost column. Just kind of going through the motions at this point. Hey, Nitty Rat. Good evening. We get a fight with fire that we can kick. Nope. All right, moving on. Did not stumble whatsoever in those games. We did, and 
At the end, it didn't look like it was very close because of that. Hmm. It's problem. Last last game we kept a one lander. Didn't hit player second land. Don't think I want to keep another one lander. All right, we got some more lands here. Hmm. It's a tough call. We go to the bottom because there is a chance that we don't we kind of get stuck on lands and everything. But if we continue to draw lands like that, I'm gonna certainly regret putting that crisis to the bottom. Well, this has been a worst-case scenario. We're playing against Esper Control, and we've drawn land, land. So worst-case scenario for putting the Krasis to the bottom, and our Phoenix was auto -ragered. Like this, when we're looking at that Krasis, this could not have gone any worse whatsoever. Just continues to be, get worse for us. At least another Krasis will have plenty of mana for. A lot of things in our sideboard to bring in with this matchup. We're cutting all of these two mana spells. We're gonna be cutting like around ten cards and bringing it in. That's a three for one. You'll thank me opponent just that. replacing now. their card and taking two of mine. This is hardly my worst defeat. Let's skip to the good part. <laughs> Let's just spend three mana, make me discard. If I had one more mana be able to Chemister's Insight, but I don't really want to wait for them to have Absorb mana available. I want to play the Daredevil immediately. So even though this, yeah, I'm talking like this game is, you know, real bad for us, but, you yeah, know, they had the Absorb. I, I like our chances after sideboarding. Just game one, we're going to be losing here, mulliganing and, and how everything is turned out. But I, I like our chances after sideboarding. Aw, you're welcome, Babalu, saying thanks for all the content. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. Krasis is our out. We need to draw Krasis that draws more Krasis. It draws more Krasis. That's all we need are more and more Krasis. Good news, we did not show our we have not shown our opponent the Krasis. They may think we're just kinda like mono red here.
course, I want to try to play around the absorb if possible. That's not very likely. Looks like the opponent's auto tapping. I mean, not auto tapping, manually tapping. This is really just kind of a waste of time. And it's taking a while with the opponent manually tapping all that kind of stuff. It's just a waste of time. Let's just go to sideboarding. We're at 0% to win that game. So we get these extra Bane Fires, the Cinder Vines, the War Boss, extra Karn, Expansion, lots of things. Take out Coil, Strike, Shock, and a Hellkite. Hmm. Could keep Hellkite. It's, it's Hellkite or Chain Whirler. Hellkite's just, you know, expensive, dies to cast down. It's a, you know, really bad trading your five mana card for cast down for a two mana removal spell. But the haste is good at killing planeswalkers, so it is good there. I think I'd rather have the war boss. How it can just come down earlier, I think. Not exactly sure. That one's pretty close. Maybe we just take out the Chain Whirler. Or sorry, the Chain... No, I said War Boss. I meant Chain Whirler. Maybe we just take out the Chain Whirler since we have War Boss. That's still six three mana creatures. Yeah, we'll do that. Treasure map's good. I guess he's keeping this. Have treasure map. Keep scrying spells to the top. I could see keeping this. Definitely value hitting land drops. And scrying is good. 25 lands. Worst case scenario in these kind of matchups is, you know, having like, you know, two mana and not being able to play anything. So this is not worst case scenario. Plus, this hand is awesome against Thought Erasure. So, like, we play our treasure map on turn two and then they Thought Erasure us and just whiff. So, we're already good against Thought Erasure, which is like, you know, one of their best cards. And just blank that. Dang it, Painfire. You're going to get Thought Erasured. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and draw here with us having the six three mana creatures that I'd like to try to play. Well, maybe not. No, I'll, I'll scry. All right, well, that was nice. Wish I would have just drawn then. Could have had the scry afterwards, but all good. Oh, whoops. Well, that one worked out too. All right, get the stop in this time.
Hmm. I guess I throw a treasure map into absorb. Or I don't. Yeah, I like not doing that. Minus three. Minus three. I'm no minus three. Excellent fight. You know what? I'm not done yet. Yeah, if they would have had four mana and were willing to like chemistry's insight, then that'd be a different story. So four five. Now what? I don't know. Do whatever, Teferi. Go to the graveyard. Just get out of here. You don't have to go home, but you gotta get the heck up out of here. So we still have a treasure that can make blue mana for Krasis right now. This isn't a fight you can win. No time for a break. So I like playing the treasure map here even into absorb mana because they want to protect the Teferi and the treasure map does not threaten the Teferi. So we get to sneak in that treasure map. I suppose that's how it was meant to happen. Looks like Mortify. Yeah. Please don't have a third Teferi. Please. Yay, not third Teferi. So five, six. Daredevils are cool. Oh, I should shock there so I can activate treasure map. That should be a shock. I'm, of course, not using a treasure for to just to scry. Yeah, I should pay two life there. Alright, they're down to five cards. And we have five cards. Go, Warboss, go! Come on, you're going to be sitting here manually tapping all the time and you're not going to stop my war boss from triggering before you kill it?
Okay. So no Karn for us. Ah, grab the Karn. You got it. Oh, keep. So, uh, four, five, six again. Gonna wait a tad and make it a lot bigger. Uh, a lot is a stretch, but you know, we can make it bigger. So, I want to be able to play, like, Phoenix and Karn or something like that. You know, like, I'm, I'm only playing one card here, so I'm playing my least valuable card, the Hellkite. <laughs> this opponent's a chore to play against, yeah. The tapping adds a little bit of time. Just don't find Third to Fairy. Yeah, I'll take Archer Vraska. That's a quality land in my mono red Krasis deck. So right now it's four, five, six, seven. We'd sack one treasure to make it eight. Hey, good evening, good evening, Zed. I can throw a Daredevil out there and just exile the Chemist's Insider. I can pay both my treasures to draw the two. Yeah, they could absorb this. I could, like, if this does get absorbed, I could pay the two treasures to get Karn and play. It's going to be drawing cards of those treasures anyway. That's pretty valuable of not letting them have the insight. So they're at five cards, we're at six. We have a Phoenix in play. We got two extra lands in play. Hmm. Alright, that's a good one. That's a good one. No contempt over here. If I go Krasis for the full amount, we're going to have to go to discard. We 
moon discard with all these lands probably isn't the worst. So I can go, what, Krasis for 10? Draw 5. We have 5 other cards. You have to discard 3. So it's basically like discarding these 3 lands. The problem with playing Karn and Krasis is that if my opponent kills Krasis, which is likely, then these 2 creatures can kill the Karn. I think we just go for the full amount. Yeah, we could yeah, we could just kill the Phoenix and have it go to our graveyard. They just get the zero one token if we want to use that with the Daredevil. It's true, we don't really need to contempt it. Just leave him with the token. That's a better thing to insight. Or that's a better thing to Daredevil. I haven't killed this crisis yet. I mean, it's either the first card in our hand or the last card. What? Hellkite? What? We're looking pretty good right now. Let's say we're looking quite good. Let's see what our opponent draws. Something that costs a lot of mana for how you can see how many lands they're manually tapping over there. And it is. It's a Teferi. Right on schedule. Please Hurry. not absorb as well. That'd be a little bit of a bummer. Well, I mean, I was thinking about if I cast Explosion to kill Teferi, I can't expansion the counter spell. Another move. So we'll reduce both of these toughnesses to two for the first strike. That did resolve pretty quickly. Enough. 
<laughs> hey, Legazoe. Like yeah, this is pretty wild. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I guess now I have nine. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have activated that map. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I still have the mountain. We have 10, so I can go like Phoenix, Phoenix, and have expansion available. Which I like that. Let's my opponent draw one more card for the Teferi. But I want to be able to, you know, have this explosion available. Keep up the pace. I don't really want to. I don't, know, I don't really want to just explosion that Teferi right then. See if we can just kill the Teferi. Anyway. We don't need an upkeep stop. I already know that the top card of my library that we're going to keep it. We don't need an upkeep stop with the treasure map. Rude. They kept that card on top. So we will have... Oh no, let's cry here. Don't want that one. Before we make any decisions, let's get more information about cards that we have. I guess I should just be I should be playing the Chain Whirler pre combat, but whatever. No, I like I like playing a post combat, honestly. I like their Phoenix turning into an 0 one. I will sacrifice my Daredevil here because I'm kinda of expecting a wrath from Time them. For plan B. Choices we make reveal who we are. Only time will tell. So both of our phoenixes are good. So even like a Kaya's Wrath, we get our phoenixes back. So we're good there.
Yes, I understand, y'all, that, that the lag is there. I can't do anything about it. I know. Just yelling about it. I, I can't do anything about it, so just yelling about it doesn't doesn't help. That was game two. Don't play Lightning Strike for Hostage Taker and could see them having, like, they now s s see my decks, yet they didn't really see too much removal. I think I want these in, and I think I want these out. Lightning Strike's not, not going to work on Hostage Taker. It's basically just for Thief, though. If my opponent now comes with Thief. Thief is the reason to have the strike in there. Opponent kept all seven. See, remember last game, I kept six lands in a treasure map because we were able to hit land drops, play all of our spells, and, and that was really important. This this hand, you know, we could just like get stuck on like two lands and then just not really do anything, and that's that's a big problem. Land drops are very important. All right, definitely like the treasure maps. Uh, what else? I have I have a few different white decks with it, with Adanto Vanguards or uh, Pro Colo. So you're gonna have to give me some more information. They're usually the angel decks though. So are you looking for like mono white angel? Like basically all of my, I guess, I guess basically all the, all of the Adanto Vanguard decks are angel decks. So you could be mono white angels or Orzov angels or Mardu angels. Those are all. White decks with Vanguard. Ah, uh, didn't get to the... I'll keep stopping time. Alright, got the upkeep stop now. Preach with that resub. No, I don't do... No, I don't really do bow ties. I don't, I don't really like bow ties. I like skinny ties. So the Ray's Boar. No, this is a brand new one. Didn't see it. Oh, and Living Twister. Two brand new ones. So Living Twister. That one has less text. R R G for a two five elemental. I like three mana two fives. That's my kind of stats. It says pay one in a red, discard a land card, deal two damage to any target, and pay a G to return a tapped land you control to its owner's hand. Hmm. All right, not loving those two abilities for cards that I like too much. Anyway, let's check out this Raze Boar. So Raze Boar is uh, Ilharg, the Raze Boar. 3 RR for a 6-6 six, six Trample. It's a boar god. When Ilhor Ilharg, the Raze Boar, 
attacks, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield, tapped and attacking, return that creature to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. That's hecka good. Green man up in here. Yeah, those are some useful cards. Carn and war boss. All right, there's more text on here. When Ilharg the Ilharg the Razebor dies or is put into exile from the battlefield, you may put it into its owner's library, third from the top. Ah, so you can Teferi tuck it instead of having it die. Yeah, this is tough. This would take a treasure to cast. I have a way to like shuffle my library and shuffle all these cards back in. If my opponent would have chemistry's inside there at end step, I was going to copy it. So that's why I didn't pop my cinder vines immediately. I wanted to see if there was going to be a chemistry's inside for me to copy. Do I spend a treasure to copy that? That's going to take the crisis. I think the answer is no. So worried about negate would have been a good time to explosion. Could have drawn a whole lot of cards with explosion. I mean, I guess five. I could have explosion for five, but kind of worried about negate there because if that is a negate, that just wastes all my treasures and everything. So let's just have these treasure coves kind of keep digging us for the different colors of mana. How does Razebor work from Ixalan's Binding Conclave Tribunal? Does it go back? Yeah, yeah, because it'd be put into exile from the from the battlefield. So yeah, you could have it go back. All right, so I can go. Um, I can just explosion for six. I do have to discard a card if that's the case, so might as well just explosion for five. 
But if I if I explosion for six, they're at seven. And then the bane fire is lethal next turn. But if I do five, they're at eight. I just have to draw a land and then bane fire is lethal, or I have this thing. So yeah, bane fire is still lethal. Alright. This is looking good for, good for us. That expansion explosion was really nice. We only have all basic mountains and an Arch of Araska for our lands. We're still over here casting explosion. All right, that should be game. No thought erasure. I am not going to sit this one. Unless they suddenly have revitalize, which we haven't seen revitalize at all yet. That'd be a little bit of a bummer. Uh, ye well, Afaya asked about, with this deck, how we have Hellkites in for the 5 mana slot, saying for 5 mana and standard, we could be playing um, Demanding Dragon or Siege Gang Commander as well. Hellkite is absolutely better than Demanding Dragon. Siege Gang it's, is uh, situational, whether Siege Gang or Hellkite's better. Uh, you know, it depends on what deck you're playing against and, and things like that. But I think overall, Hellkite's probably better. All right, and that match is finally over. Mono Red Crisis taking down Esper Control. We saw our sideboard was a big part of that win. Hey, what's up, Yud? Yeah, everything's going good. Monorail Crisis is now 2 and 1. How good is Hellkite from 1 to 10? I guess I would need I would need to know like what this what the denominator is like is one talking about any card in standard so that like the worst cards in standard are ones I don't think they'll have a haste creature that I need to shock um yeah I guess I would all right, so if it's a if it's a one to ten where one are, are the worst cards, you know, like standard legal, then it's probably like an eight, or maybe maybe a nine, probably an eight. If because the cards that are standard, there are just so many cards that are just so bad that are standard legal, and it's just so much better than your random. You know, common from Ixalan or whatever. It's so much closer to the top. It's probably like an 8. That sounds like a... Reasonable spot. Ugh. Uh, the Growth Chamber Guardian draw... You know, like the 3-3 three, 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 three Squadron Hawks with this combo. That's a rough one. I think Esper Legends went 4-2 yesterday. I think we lost the final boss. We had three decks yesterday that went 4-2, losing a few final boss matches. Yeah, the raised board card is pretty sweet. That one looks real good. 
We were just talking about that one. Wish this shock did something. Unfortunately, this rhythm of the wild is keeping the shock from doing anything. This is tax is a six five. Give it haste. Dang it. If only they gave it haste. I could shock it. We gave Carnage Tyrant haste. So Carnage Tyrant will attack as an 8 7. I guess I should double block it. It's either that or, or kill the Gore Claw. And play Phoenix. Or yeah, kill the Gore Claw, have Phoenix block Carnage Tyrant. Uh, let's see, next turn, Krasis is only for five. Yeah, I think I do this. Yeah, Shock is just kind of more value more versatile in game one than Shiv and Fire, but yeah, Shiv and Fire in this scenario, you know, against other creature decks, Shiv and Fire, of course, is going to be a lot better, but Shock can do things against non-creature decks. Okay, okay. So I can... Well, I can't... I cannot kill Goreclaw with saving Hellkite. I can't do both of those. The Hellkite would have to block the, the Goreclaw, because the Goreclaw was a 6-5 when it attacks. Now, I'd like to draw a land next turn. Want to play a 6 6 Crisis? Another question When the next expansion after war gets released, what happens to Dominari and Ixalan? Okay, so it's. Um, Let's kick this madness into no, they do not go out standard one, one by one. So there's going to be War of the Spark will release. We'll have seven sets in standard. The next set after that will be Core Set 2020. When that gets released, we will have eight sets in standard. Nothing will leave. That will be in like July-ish. I don't know. Off the top of my head, June, July, something like that. And then in September, October, we will have... A new set released. So this is after Core Set 2020, which will be the fall set, um, which will be a new a new plane that we'll be going to. And when that set releases, at that time we will, you know, we'll have eight sets in standard. But when when that set releases, I'll we're going to go back down I've to five sets. Words. We're gonna, going to lose four sets. We will lose both Ixalan sets. And Dominaria and Corset 2019 at that time, and we'll be adding in that that set. So at that time, standard will be just Ravnica. The two, well, all of them. So it'll be just Guilds of Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance, War of the Spark, Corset 2020, and whatever that full set is.
It's possible I just don't need to be using this right now. If they just didn't attack with their Growth Chamber Guardians last turn, they're probably not attacking with them this turn. It's possible I could have just played the treasure maps and waited to see if my opponent found another Rekindling Phoenix. There you go. Good job, Matthew. That's awesome. Man, it sounds like you're doing great with your ice cream truck and everything. Modern Horizons is not part of Standard. That's that's a sub that's a separate standalone set that is made for modern. That's not going to be on Arena. That has nothing to do with Standard. And now we're getting all those lands. Okay. Uh, no, no details on the format where you will still be able to, whatever that format is called or anything about it, no details on the format where you'll still be able to use the cards that rotate out. They have a lightning strike to go with the Hellkite activation. We're dead. So they have double Hellkite activation for Phoenix. Wumpus, we're about to win this game. Hey, Gatsby. The cards are... The cards are just going to rotate, as in the, they won't be legal and standard to use anymore. They're not going to leave your arena account or anything like that. Uh, they'll still be on your your account on arena. There'll be another format for you to use them on. Those mana sleeves, like you should be able to find them in the store. They just cost gold. Uh, they don't cost gems. Uh, they may, they're probably in the featured section of the store. That'd be my guess. Wumpus, you don't need all those caps. All right, need more lava coils. Hmm. Don't really want Karn, but I don't. A candidate doesn't really kill things. War boss is gonna be too slow. Bane fire, I guess. 
Expansion. No, not really copying a whole lot. Cinder vines, no. Just could just go with this. We saw that last game that shock can be pretty bad. Maybe I'll just play Banefires. Yeah, that that was pretty fortunate with the rhythm, because without rhythm the shocks are a lot better. Very true. Not sure about all these daredevils. Can I just have the first hand back? Just need to always keep the six land hands. Gotta keep the six landers. All right, well, we're gonna have turn three Chain Whirler with that six land hand anyway. Turn three Chain Whirler looking kind of good here. Let's see double Land War Elf this turn. Just attack, yeah, there you go. One more Land War Elf. Ah, oh, so close. I was so close. No removal. No removal. N O removal. All right, killing this uh, spellbreaker during my turn because you know how the spellbreaker gains hexproof during their turn. So if they have. If they, you know, draw a lava coil for the chain whirler, I can't just like, alright, then kill Spellbreaker. I'll do. Get some more lands here for this Hydroicrasis. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Crisis for six next turn. I'll, I'll keep this land. I like this deck. Yeah, I'm liking this deck so far. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Krasis fits in the deck pretty easily. Even though it's it's mono red because it's you know like the it's big red. Uh, we're not, you know, mono red aggro. I mean, this is just a removal spell for Growth Chamber Guardian. Hmm. Alright, can't kill him yet with the Bane Fire, but almost. Next turn. 
even if like there's a collision that kills the Krasis, Bane Fire will finish off our opponent next turn. All right, and there we go. We are three and one. Yes, organic chicken. The so the question is, do you ever incorporate donation decks you like into regular play? And yes, I do. Uh, for example, the Simic Elves that we're going to play up next, that was originally a donation deck, and I liked it a lot. And I updated the sideboard from like what what we got and everything, and and I you know play it you know somewhat regularly, just like all the stuff. So yeah, definitely a good a good amount of my decks. You know, like, I don't, I don't know what kind of percentage or whatever, but yeah, definitely some of the decks that I play are decks that were donation decks at one point that I liked and just kind of continued to update and everything and, and tune and, and continue to play. That game win was certainly on the back of Chain Whirler. Chain Whirler killing the double Land War Elf got us there. Hey, Jelly Tug. So this hand's pretty lacking, but I'm not mulliganing it. We need a blue source, obviously, before we can start crisising. We need a spell in the graveyard before Daredevil does a ton. Beso says, I really think you should get one rare card or mythic rare card if you get to 15 wins a day. And you do. If you get to 15 wins, you get at minimum 1,250 gold um, at maximum 1,500 gold, depending on whether you have, you know, whether your, your uh, daily quest is 750 or... Uh, 500 gold, but let's just say it's 500. Let's say you have the lower one. You still get... Um, you still get 1,250 gold, and with with 1,000 gold, you can just buy a pack. And so buying a pack, you get a rare or a mythic, plus you get, you know, one-sixth of a wild card as well. So if you just... You know, you get enough gold that you just get to buy a pack. And that's quite a bit for, you know, a free-to-play game. It's For somebody who's played Magic for a long time, Magic has never had any kind of option that is... You know, they've never had uh, anything that... Anything like that before of ability to um, get cards just for playing. Sorry. So I think I just have to get this risk factor out of here. Yes, I have seen Ilharg the Raised Boar. Been talking about that one a little bit. That one does look really cool. That's probably good. Looking at that card, is it is it better than is it better than Doom Whisperer? Probably.
but not necessarily. Hey, Punk Boy RD. Welcome. You are amazing. Thanks for continuing that sub going for an entire half a year. You are awesome. And I So I think you have the blue tie now for having the blue tie badge. For the half year. Hmm. Definitely wish this was not a shock land that we could just play the Krasis for six this turn. I think I need a Daredevil. You have Daredevil kill this gutter snipe. And I'm not, wasn't shocking for the Krasis, not shocking for the Hellkite. We'll just play this thing. You thought it was a dress? Uh, yeah, I need... We, we talked about this actually earlier in the stream when people were asked about we were like just finding out was, there's different colors to the ties. Um, so then I'm planning on paying somebody to redesign those and make them more, make it more obvious. All right, so we'll go Cannonade, Coil, and out with Karn, and Banefire, and what did I do last time? I just played. I, I guess I just played one cannonade last time. This opponent seems to be more creature heavy, though. Would I rather have an, another cannonade over a daredevil? Maybe. You think? Do you think there is going to be an Ugin in the set? We haven't seen. We haven't really heard about Ugin being in, in the set or anything, right? Like, it's been basically like Planeswalkers versus Nicol Bolas. There hasn't been any real indication that Ugin's chilling somewhere, right? Am I wrong about that? If Ugin is somewhere, I just I haven't heard about any Ugin anywhere. Ugin was on the stained glass. Oh, okay. So that means if Ugin's on the stained glass, then yeah, Ugin likely has a card. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see. Have they, has has there been any, like, articles about the magic story? I know that there's the books that are releasing, like, later on this year. But usually for all the sets, they have, like, you know, like an eight-part story or whatever uh, online. And I, looked, I was looking that up the other day, and I couldn't find them for War of the Spark. Hey, Nikki B. 
four months of you being amazing. Thanks, Nikki B, for that resub. Okay, so there's only just the short story for each guild. So we saw five of those from Guilds of Ravnica and five from Ravnica Allegiance. So nothing, no short, short stories for war, but then they'll have... Then they'll have that full book for war. I'm definitely going to be getting that book. Is there is there two books? I think there was like two books, right? Somebody linked them before. I like saved them on my Amazon of like in my wish list. Yeah, Nam, uh, I think just, just a regular donation, uh, just regular, just $20 donation, like, like always, um, not too difficult for me to throw a sideboard together, I can do that. All right, we are four and one, heading on to the final boss with Mono Red Krasis. All right, y'all know what that means. It means we gotta get our final boss playlist. We gotta get in the zone. Yesterday, we got to the final boss three times and we were unsuccessful each time with you know our three different decks. We were here four and one and lost, so Let's make up for it here today. I don't know. I kind of want to keep it. No. This is the Final Fantasy VII boss theme. <laughs> this deck reaching the final boss is absolutely crazy. Hmm. This is a good matchup for Chain Whirler. Game Whirler has been really good for us this league. It's probably not a surprise. Yeah, opponent's been missing land drops. Ooh. Necrotic wound and save that necrotic wound. Oh, it's very patient necrotic wounding. And we could have lethal next turn with two chain whirlers hitting and then double lightning strike.
Never not whirling chains. Always whirling chains. So what do we want to sideboard against them? The 6-6s six are going to be a huge problem for us. All my cards are doing the crackling because our opponent's playing the green black sleeves. I don't know, is Daredevil going to be good? Probably. I mean, yeah, probably not that good. Hmm. So I'm thinking this. Do I want to have Daredevil over that Banefire? Daredevil is amazing. Yeah, but is their graveyard going to be full of spells? Like, what are we getting back? Like, find? Like, find finality? Does block pretty well. Is true there. All right, I'm in. What what am I not in for then? I think I do like cannonade here. I guess I'm gonna take out a shock. I guess. Go ahead, take something out. With us playing the fiery cannonades, that kind of replaces a shock. I'm not sure if Lightning Strike is really necessary. I've, I was trying to think of, like, some card that they're going to have that has three toughness instead of two, and I wasn't really thinking of one. So I could see just having... I could see just having, like, taking out the Lightning Strike instead of taking out Shock. Pirates theme going for da Daredevil. Ow. So going with Daredevil, because if our opponent has Chupacabra, then hopefully Hellkite survives. We can play Hellkite next turn. I'll just take that card, though. None of these really look like pirates to me.
Hmm. No spells. They do not have the mana to be able, to, like, even with the land drop, they won't have the mana to folly back Chupacabra and play Chupacabra. If we need to, we can lightning strike this thing. Which I guess I need to now. If I don't, if I don't lightning strike, they get to pick up both these gutter bones. Uh, you can just play the six six though. So yeah, I, I'm not really winning. There we go. And say so I'm not really winning against that six six anyway. So I need these extra cards, and look for cards like Chain Whirler. Chain Whirler is just so perfect. Just three power first strike allows us to lightning strike down the Molder Hulk. But remember, the Molder Hulk never stops coming because of the memorial. Like, it just it never does. But we could... I mean, we have to exile it. So we need, we need to... Um, we need to get, like, this Necrotic Wound to exile it. Or just draw a lava coil. Oh crap, Chupacabra. I did not play around Chupacabra at all. Crap. N the Necrotic only does minus one, minus one. Necrotic's not going to do anything. Crap. Chupacabra, that's bad. Okay, that attack is ending up being bad. So they're going to Chupacabra away one Chain Whirler, then I'm going to have to just chump with the other now. Or just throw this Daredevil out there. I guess I'm going to throw this Daredevil out there to chump block. I think I'd rather chump with the Chain... I'd rather chump with the Daredevil than chump with the Chain Whirler. Should not have attacked there. Oh, wow. They did not choop. We got lucky. Yes, Necrotic Wound says six while it's in the opponent's graveyard. Once we cast it, it goes back to... Then it goes to us casting it. It just says six on it because it, you know, is like the opponent's card. It would have changed. It would have been one. We had one creature in the graveyard. So 
those false ad advertisement from that necrotic wound. I mean, it's the same as Bacon Bolt. Done that plenty with Bacon Bolt. It's the exact same thing. When we're casting the card, it checks our graveyard. Because it's, it's our spell that we're casting. So, you know, we cast this as number of your graveyard, so it goes to your graveyard. Um, so we do not have lethal. So we'll just keep this wall of first strikes chilling here. Definitely, you know, considering trying to show strength by keeping that land in hand. If we draw a crisis, I'll feel bad about it, though. So playing this, because we had an odd number of lands in play. Oh, did I miscount? No, we had an even. Oh, I miscounted. We had an even. I must, maybe I just didn't count the treasure cove or something. Yeah, we actually had an even, so yeah, I could have just kept that in hand. That's all right. Yeah, that, that's just game. We can just get to, get to attack in for lethal. Do they not? They didn't just have any creature to go grab. They just they just didn't want to use their folly, I guess. Yeah, I mean they had creatures to get. We are victorious. Jelly with 100 bits. Whew. After yesterday's rough outing against final bosses, felt good to pick up the win. And we are 5 and 1 with Mono Red Crisis. So, <laughs> yeah, this deck played pretty well. Played pretty well. Um, you know, we need some more testing with it to see like what the real problems are with it in the sideboard the match that we lost was to is it phoenix and uh we got beat up pretty bad in that match There's probably some things we could do about it but it was just the kind of thing where our hands were very meh and opponent's hands were really good um, and so like the game, I think the match would be closer than what the, the games looked against it is at Phoenix. It just looked really bad from like opponent just dropping Ral on turn five and we had nothing. And then Ral just, you know, wins the game by miles kind of thing. Um, so there we go. That's Mono Red Crisis. Definitely a nice, successful, uh, first start to it. Um, so yeah, so thanks for the donation deck. Tree Fitty was the one that donated for this deck. Thank you so much. Looked very good. All right, so uh, if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, I hope you hit the subscribe button on the YouTube channel over there. If you're not, um, here is the YouTube channel if you're not following it already. Uh, YouTube.com slash ToddStevensMTG. I put all the replays for all of the decks up there on the channel and in the future i'll be having uh, some youtube channel only content uh later on as uh, that stuff's in the works right now but for now thanks for watching mono red crazy